step three, populating the template. Hi there, Anna here from Anna Aspinus Designs. I want to welcome you back to the second part of the Artsy Digital Pocket Scrapbooking series, the photo inspired approach. In the last video, I walked you through my photo sorting and organizing process, and then I showed you how to use the photo inspired template and put it into a double page format. So I have that template on my screen. In this step, we are going to add photos to the mask layers in the template, which are located in the layers panel in either Adobe Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. So each one of these layers corresponds to a layer in the template. And then when we have added all of the photos, I will then go in and fill any remaining masks with either artsy cards or art play palettes. So I'm going to navigate to the photos that we sorted. And if you remember, I do have some duplicates. Some of these have text added to them via Instagram stories. And I'm finding that that's a really fast and fun way to add text to my photos. So I'm simply going to select all of these photos. I'm going to click on the first one hold down the shift button on my keyboard and then click on the last one and then drag them into my workspace. Your other option is to go to file at the top of your screen, open and then navigate to the folder where you have your photos saved and you can see that they are all opening up into the background there. And then once they have all opened, my next step is to go to Window, Arrange, and then Float All in Windows. And that allows me to access those photos a little easier. And then from here, it's just a question of adding the photos to the template. And I usually go back to my original folder once in a while just to kind of look and see which of my favorite photos I want to showcase in the larger spots on my template. So I'm kind of looking through and I'm seeing that we have a series here of photos. So these would work really well with this three frame mask here. I could put those in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm simply going to select the move tool from the tools panel, click on the auto select option, which becomes available when you have that move tool selected. Then I'm going to access the mask in the template that I want to clip that photo to. So when I click on that with that auto select option checked, then it's going to select the corresponding mask in the layers panel. This saves me going through the layers panel and switching these eye icons on and off in order to locate the correct mask. And so then it's just a matter of dragging the photo over the top of the mask. And notice it's been deposited directly above the mask so that you can clip that layer to that element. So I'm going to resize it by using the transform controls and the bounding box. And this is available to you when you have the move tool selected. If you hover your cursor over one of the corner points, you'll get a double ended diagonal arrow. And this allows you to either enlarge or make your photo much smaller. And you want to make it so that it slightly overlaps the edges of the mask so that you completely cover it. And then you can either double click or you can click on the check mark at the top of your screen if you're working Adobe Photoshop or on the bounding box if you're working in Photoshop Elements. I'm going to go ahead and click that to accept that transformation. You can see now that the bounding box is much smaller and then we can go to layer create clipping mask. You can also use the shortcuts that are available to you, which would be listed next to the command in the menu. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And now you can see that that photo clips down to the layer and it removes the excess, which was hanging out side the bounds of that frame. And then once you've added that photo, you can go ahead and close it down. 
and then now I have another one. This one you'll notice is a landscape as opposed to a portrait orientation and is not going to fit within our frame. So I'm going to go ahead and select one of these other mask areas and I'm going to go with this one purely because the subject matter fills my frame here and if I add it to the one on the right then there's going to be some distortion on the right side of the image. So I'm going to again select that mask layer, drag the photo over, go to layer, create clipping mask, and then this time I'm going to resize after I have clipped the image to the mask. And so you want to resize it so that we can include all members of the group. And this isn't a great scenario here. I could go ahead and paint directly on the mask, but I'm going to lose the line here. So I'm going to try and apply this to a different mask. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it up so that it's above this mask here in the layers panel and then move the photo over and see if this is a better fit for my photo layer, create clipping mask, and that's much better. Go ahead and close it out and then we have another one here. So I'm going to go ahead and add that into the frame because it is a series of photos. Go to layer, create clipping mask and resize. A few simple commands that you're going to use over and over in order to clip the photos to all of the mask layers. And when you're working with similar photos, it's always a good idea to vary the different perspectives of your image. So you can see, for example, instead of duplicating the meat that's on the plate, then I'm going to do more of a close-up of my husband's face. So and this just adds a little bit of variation and we've got a bit of a light in the top here that's shining off his sunglasses. So I'm going to move that up so that we remove that from view and then go ahead and close it down. And I think we have one more here of the food. So we've got a food one here and we've got two people photos here. So I'm going to basically move this photo across because I think it would be nice to have person, food, person as opposed to having person and person. So I'm just going to move that up, drag it across and then go to layer, create clipping mask and now select that mask and then move it over. So you don't have to know ahead of time exactly which masks you're going to use for what photo. It's a very fluid process and you sort of add one photo at a time and make adjustments according to preference and the way that the layout organically comes together. So I'm going to close that out. I've got a couple of text screenshots here that I like to add to my layout. So I'm just going to move those off to the side because I'm not sure where they're going to go. I'm actually thinking they might work well in this duo frame here, but no rush to add that. And then I'm just going to move along and see. So I want a photo that's going to be a favorite photo that's going to go here. Again, if I go back to my folder, I want to select a photo that I really like to go into that particular position. And I really like this one of Luke here. I've got two options. I can add this one. I'm not sure if this one's going to be big enough. So let's bring it in. Notice if I try and bring in the same photo twice, then it will bring that photo up to the top of my stack. And so that allows me to access photos quickly. So you can either scroll through and find the one that you want, or you can go back to your folder and just drag it in again and it will do that for you, which is a, a nice little trick. So I'm going to select this mask and just see how big this photo is and it actually works out quite well. So I am going to clip that photo to that mask and resize just slightly. And we've got a lot of distressing happening at the top of the mask, whereas the bottom, there's not much going on. So I'm actually going to select that mask because we'd be much better off having that distressing at the bottom of our image. And I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, 
and then flip vertical. And notice now how that distressing has been transferred to the bottom and we have a much clearer view of the top. I'm also going to select the paintbrush tool from the tools panel and then access an Anablens Artsy brush from Anablens Artsy number no. four series. And then I'm just going to paint on the mask just to ensure that we have all of the details in view. And then go ahead and close that image out. Notice how I am putting in the more prominent photos first and the series of photos. We want to get those situated and placed together. And then I also like this tree one as well. We're sort of running out of landscape style images. I've got this cute one of my friend's dog. So maybe we'll plant him in one of these landscape picture frames here or element layers. And I'm looking at the colors as I'm placing the photos. We've got a lot of yellows here, partly because of the tungsten lighting. Um, it's giving a yellow cast to my photos. Now I can go ahead and fix that, but quite often I will change the color balance slightly, but I usually just embrace the colors. But we have an opportunity here to basically balance all of those yellows on this side of the page with this photo because this photo features some yellow and some orange cushions. So I am going to reselect that move tool from the tools panel, ensure that you have the auto select option checked and then I'm just going to drag that photo over and I didn't select the layer that I wanted to add that photo to. So let's go ahead and delete that. I'm now going to click on that layer and then do that again and now you can see that the photo drops in the correct position and then I'm going to use those transform controls to make that photo fit the area of the mask and go to layer create clipping mask this by the way is Clive he is a pug teacup poodle mix with a mohawk go ahead and close that photo out Let's go ahead and add this one here. This might be where you want to move some of the text around. I actually like to have some space between some of the photo layers. This allows the eye to rest as it moves across the page. Very rarely will you find me using a template and not adding any digital art supplies to some of the masks. So I'm going to just move this text down and add this photo at the top here and you can see that it is fairly transparent. If I select that layer and then drag that photo over the top of the mask, go to layer create clipping mask, you can see that it's fairly faint. So I'm going to delete that layer and I'm just going to duplicate that mask layer just a few times and what this is going to do is it's going to increase the intensity so that we can see more of our image. And then once you've duplicated it a few times, you want to select those layers in the layers panel by holding down the shift button and then going to layer, merge layers. And then this is going to allow me to drag that photo back over the new layer, the new mask layer and go to layer, create clipping mask. And that's a much better rendition of the image. Again, I'm resizing this as preferred. and moving it around to get the best fit for my photo and then closing it out. And as you start getting down to the business of adding most of the photos, then it becomes easier to look at the photos that you have remaining. Interestingly enough too, I like photos that are looking up to be placed at the top of my page and ones that are kind of down low at the bottom. So that's just one thing that I personally like to do. To me, it wouldn't make sense to have a looking up photo at the bottom of my page. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this one here. And this one looks fairly transparent. So I'm just going to duplicate that mask and then I'm going to bring it down by about 50% because I don't think we need it necessarily at 100. I'm going to select those two layers and go to layer, merge layers, and then move that image across and then go to layer, create clipping mask and resize. 
So I like some of the distressed texture, but not necessarily all of it. And this is kind of a fun opportunity here because I was looking up the perspective of the image is a little bit off. So you can go to edit, transform, perspective, and you can play around with the perspective of that image if you wanted to. So I quite like it like that. And then we'd have to go in and resize that a little bit more. I'm going to move it up so that I can see the paintings also in view. Accept that transformation and close out. And then I think I am going to balance the blue in this image with the blue in this one. And this is one of those images where we can use any part of the photo. I do have a duplicate copy, so we could add that one perhaps here. So I'm going to select that mask and then bring this across and then hopefully that text should fit nicely within the bounds of the mask. And then I've already got the title applied so this is going to save me some time in adding word art to my photo. So I'm going to go ahead and close both of these out and see what we have remaining. I've got a coffee cup here. So we have a circle here with some red, so potentially we can balance this on the other side of the page by adding a circle down at the bottom here. It could be here or here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move this text across and try it here. And I quite like the area of transparency. You can see that it's denoted by this lighter gray, so let's try it there. I've selected that mask and then I do believe I have one with text on it. So it might be too much to have three lots of text. You can go with three lots of text. I usually like to just stick to one lot of text on each page. So I'm going to go ahead and add the clean version of the photo and go to layer create clipping mask. And you don't necessarily have to have the entire photo within the bounds of the mask. So I could have a close-up shot or I can bring them all in like that. So it's kind of up to you which way you want to go. I kind of like it like that, but I am feeling like it's a little too distressed. So I'm just going to duplicate that layer. It's going to unclip the mask, but that's okay. I'm going to select those two layers, go to layer, merge layers, and then reselect the photo layer, go to layer, create clipping mask, and that's just slightly better. This distressing does actually give the coffee a look of the steam, which I quite like. So closing that one out and we're getting quite populated with the photos here so it could be that I have to ditch some of them. This one can go because we already added that one. I have this one which I want to add in. This was Ella's first art being published in a magazine so I'm going to select this mask here and add this in down at the bottom. Layer create clipping mask and again I can play around with the orientation of that and how much of the image I want to include in that mask area. So I'm going to have it fill the frame. Close that out. And then I want to add this one. So I'm going to go ahead and we've got a couple of frames here which are small and what we really need is a portrait mask as opposed to two smaller landscape masks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these masks and then I am going to select one of the masks that we've already used, perhaps this one, and duplicate that and then bring it up here like this. And then to add some variation I'm going to go to Edit, Transform and Rotate just to make it look a bit different. You can also take a brush and you can go in and you can add some brush marks to the center of the mask. But if you do that then ensure that you have a selection made in the mask area so that any brush strokes that you apply don't overshoot the bounds of the mask area. So I'm just going to just add a bit of additional 
brushwork on there to make the mask a little bit more visible. And then I can go ahead and add an image. I think I was going to add one of the text layers to this one over here, but I think I'm going to add it here. We've got a lot of people photos happening down here and so I don't really want to add another people photo especially in the same color. So I'm going to go ahead and add this over here and go to layer create clipping mask. Don't necessarily need the time, the date would be handy so I'm going to keep the date in there go ahead and close this out and then some of these may have to be ditched. This one actually is a portrait photo but we only really need to see this portion of the image so we could add this one over here. Let's go and add this one to the bottom. I'm going to duplicate that mask and go layer merge down just to make sure that we have a good area to clip the image and go to layer create clipping mask and then move this photo into position and resize accordingly. I want to include our Black Lab Raven and the light as well as a couple of her toys. And I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And then this one, we've already got enough text, so I'm going to close him out. And then this is a duplicate, so I'm going to close this out. And so notice how we're slowly whittling down these images. I'm going to add this one here, add this one into this frame, go to layer, create clipping mask. And then potentially we can add this one in the top here. which basically allows us to use all of the photos that we had for this particular layout and yet we still have a few areas that we can clip papers to. So once we have got all of the photos in place then it's just a matter of going through and editing them. And so to edit them I generally will use the curves I will select the move tool from the tools panel and select the photo I want to adjust. I tend to go with the larger photos first. Go to image adjustment curves. Now the curves is only available in Adobe Photoshop. If you're working in Adobe Photoshop Elements then you're going to want to go with levels. So you'll select the photo and you'll go to enhance adjust light and then levels. In Adobe Photoshop that's image adjustment levels and this allows you to make the shadows darker, the highlights brighter and then you can also adjust the midtones if you want to. I tend to gravitate towards curves just because it's a one-stop action, maybe two, whereas usually with levels you have to move three of these levers which makes it a three-step process. And then I'm also going to go down here and just go through and edit these images just to give them a bit more pop. One of the other things that I like to do is to convert one or two of my photos in my layouts to black and white. And this is really helpful in places where there is a lot going on. We've got a lot going on in this area here. So sometimes it will work for me to take a photo like this one, for example, and go to image adjustments, desaturate, and that helps to kind of calm down any overly bright colors. It also fixes this issue that we have of this yellow cast. And to get the best black and white, I like to convert it to black and white and then go to image adjustments levels just to kind of give it a little bit of a pop. And then from there I will duplicate that layer, apply a screen blending mode, duplicate the layer again and apply a soft light blending mode and then I'll go in and I will adjust those two duplicate layers to get the highlights and the shadows to the intensity that I want them 
and then I usually balance this out by trying to create a visual triangle so maybe we'll go ahead and convert this one to black and white too image adjustments desaturate and then we can go to auto contrast if you want instead of going to the levels duplicate that layer three times add screen to the first duplicate layer and soft light to the second duplicate layer and then adjust the opacity and I kind of feel like this needs even more light so this is where I will duplicate that screen light layer one more time and then reclip the soft light layer to the layer stack and that's much brighter so I'm going to go through and just intensify some of these you want to make them pop but not completely alter the color that's existing within the image so notice how I'm increasing the highlights by dragging up the top portion of the curve and then bringing down the bottom portion to make the image more contrasty it doesn't have to be an exact science it's just it's very uh, organic these ones are a little bit yellow so I will go to image adjustments and color balance for that if you're working in Adobe Photoshop elements you can try and use the hue and saturation slider so you can see that I am changing the midtones it's a little bit too green that so I'm gonna bring that down bring that in and then you can change the highlights too as well as the midtones so you're just going to move these levers down to kind of remove some of that yellow cast you can also go to image and use the auto color correction option which is available in both the full version of Photoshop and Photoshop elements and in elements you'll find that under the enhance menu it will be called auto color correction and it's just a matter of clicking on that button and it will automatically color correct that image it often adds in more of a cyan tone or a blue tone greenish tone you can improve that by adjusting the curves you can see as I bring those curves up and down so you're basically adding some contrast then you're able to remove that cast and of course if you're working in Adobe Photoshop then you have that color balance option and this will allow you to bring back some of the red tones into the image so just working my way around to make sure that we have all of the photos edited I'm not editing the text ones just leave those as is and then we've got two black and white photos on the left hand side of our page so I'm going to go ahead and match that by creating a visual triangle in having three black and white photos quite often I'll just have one black and white photo on either page but it really just depends on the density of the photo and that is density in terms of subject matter so I consider this to be a single subject photo where this is a multiple subject photo and so there's a lot more going on in this image than there is in this one so I'm going to select that image go to image adjustments and desaturate you could also go to image adjustments hue and saturation and bring down the saturation lever all the way to the left if you wanted to go in and brighten that up I like how the Sun is coming through when I do that and then the last one here like that and so that pretty much completes all of the photo editing in this particular layout once I've added the photos to the various masks in the templates I'm going to completely finish populating the template by adding either artsy cards or papers from art play palettes 
So the next step here is to identify the predominant colors in my layout. So I'm seeing some blues, a lot of kind of yellows and browns. Um, you could really go with any sort of neutral palette for this particular option. What I like to do is to head to the Anna Aspinus Design Store at O Scraps, and I'll either go into the Artsy Cards category and simply just look at the previews to find a collection that would fit the colors of my photo. So this one's got the yellows and blues and a lot of the colors that would work well with our layout. And so I'll just kind of scroll through. I like to kind of mix it up. I recently used the Autumn Elegance in one of my pages, so I don't necessarily want to go back and use that one again. This one's a kind of a very nice neutral color. Um, it's got a little bit of blue in there. I quite like this one though, Artsy Cards Home. So you can go ahead and use these Artsy Cards. They come in 6x6, 4x6 and 3x4 format, which makes them perfect for fitting into these templates. You can also use the art play palettes and the advantage of course of using the art play palettes is that you can also use the coordinating elements so I'm going to go ahead and select the art play palettes category and I have a few more newer art play palettes since adding to the artsy card series so we have a few more options available to us when using the art play palettes so maybe we'll go with this Quaintville. That's an option. Again, I'm looking at seasons too. Uh, you want something that is going to be seasonally appropriate. This Kinsfolk might be a good option. So once I have selected an art play palette, then it's a matter of going into my digital art supplies and selecting my art play palettes category, going in and finding the Kinsfolk art play palette that we want to use. So here it is and then I'm going to navigate to the papery and just bring in two of these papers. I like to use the artsy papers first so I'm just going to bring two in instead of four. We only have three masks to work with and sometimes you can make one paper work for all three of the mask layers. So that's quite fun, that little leaf here. So I'm going to select that mask with the idea of placing that leaf in the center there. Let's go layer, create clipping mask. I'm using the same technique as I used for the photos and I'm just clicking in the background. You want to be careful when you've got text on top. If you click on the text, it's going to select the text box. So make sure you click close to the edge of the mask in order to get the right layer and then you can add the paper to that mask layer. And sometimes when you've added it, it might look a bit washed out. We've got a lot of light colors here, so it might be that you want to kind of move this around to see if there's a better fit for your photo. This one's quite light, so let's go ahead and delete that and maybe try this one instead. This one's got some blue in it, which makes it quite interesting. So I am going to go ahead and again reselect that mask and then drag this in here. And this works quite well with the blue that's happening here. Layer, create clipping mask. You can also go up to image adjustment levels and you can intensify the color of your art play palettes if you want to. You can also go to image adjustment hue and saturation and maybe just tweak that blue a little bit to bring in a bit more of these brighter blues and maybe even add some reds. It's kind of coordinating now with this. So you have lots of different options when it comes to manipulating the papers. And then finally we'll select this last layer and maybe bring this over here like this. And again, you have the option to move around the paper to find the best fit. I kind of want to have a little bit of visual interest, but I want to make sure that I have enough 
white space in order to place my journaling. Once I've clipped the papers to the images, then I want to find a background paper and I like to use the same background paper for both of my pages, both sides of the spread, in order to achieve a cohesive look. So I go down to the background layer in the layers panel and then I go back to my art pie palette and I'm really looking for a solid paper. A lot of these have got quite a bit of interest going on here. Although it's quite possible that we could put two of these together. These two are very similar. So we could add these into the background. Let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to select both of those papers by holding down the control or the command key on my keyboard and then dragging that into my workspace. And then this allows us to move each of the papers into position if we want to. So we could do it that way, but you can see that there's definitely a difference between the two of them. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those and then try again with this completely solid paper. And it's slightly a darker color too, so I think it's going to work better and provide contrast with the lighter papers that we have applied to the mask layers. So you can see here this is much lighter, it gives a much better contrast. And then go ahead and duplicate that layer and move it across. One of the things that you're going to want to do is to either zoom out or make sure you pull out the edges of your canvas. You want to make sure that these papers are flush up against either side and sometimes you'll find that there's a white space in the middle down the center, which is not usually a problem if you're printing in a photo book or a reputable company that's going to do bleed printing. But if you're a bit concerned about it, then simply select both of those layers and then just enlarge them just ever so slightly and then nudge those papers back into position by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. I find that that little trick works quite well. So that's how you populate your template with photos and digital art supplies. In the last part of this series, I'm going to show you how I go about embellishing my photos with various brushes and embellishments. So I will see you again next month with the final part of this series. Thanks for watching and I will be back here again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.